Yep. Okay. Hi guys, welcome for another episode of Date Night In Podcast. My name is Ariel. Jordy. Yeah, I never know what to say after that. You just gotta build off the wave, you know. <laughs> um, we have a video podcast this time. Finally. Finally, hopefully, no <laughs> interruptions this time. Hopefully. Knowing Alberta, there probably will be. So, today, um, we don't really know what we're going to talk about, but we have a bonus footage. special footage for you guys. Um, it's a little mini podcast that we did with my cousin while we were in Vancouver. So, it's about just dating in Vancouver. Mostly dating in metropolitan areas. And then dating... Excuse me. Like dating outside of the city. And also dating in the modern world, yeah. I guess. Like how it is dating um, when it comes to like dating apps and things like that. So my cousin, Sh- Christian, um, tells us his, pr- his perspective on dating in BC. Because mm-hmm. we are not from BC. Right. So we asked him how it is, pretty much. And he's also younger than us. So he shows us his perspective on what that is like. Yeah. It's pretty intuitive. It gets very, I wouldn't say too deep, but it does hit a core. Yeah. But before that, we should have a little mini topic before we do that. Yeah, a little pick-me-up before we dive <laughs> into that. Um, I did think of one earlier. What was that? Um, personal space in a relationship. Oh, it's a How good do you one. think of it? I think it's necessary. I think so, too. Very necessary. Because sometimes you can get a little too smothered. <laughs> I, 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 I think, you know, just knowing that it's not because you want to be away from your partner. It, you know, having that personal space is still crucial to become your own person. It's a chance to reset. Yeah. It's a chance for you to get, like, that perspective of, like, you know, you don't hate your partner. Mm -hmm. Not that you don't care about them. They care about you to get your own little stuff out of the way. Like, we give each other personal space. Mm -hmm. Often. Mostly because of work, too. But, like... Yeah. When you add in in perspectives for, like, what we actually do in our day-to-day, we get a lot of personal space. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's important, especially... We don't live together, but for people that do live together and you're seeing somebody, you're seeing the same person every day. Oh, yeah. I think that personal space is really um, important. It gets overstimulating a bit. Yeah, because then it gives you time to just do your own thing. Um, and, yeah, do what it, whatever it is that you want to do or have been wanting to do. Sometimes I just like to literally like walk around on my own mm-hmm. <laughs> um what i struggle with though is asking for that personal space i feel like i don't want to sound of- offensive to to you um so sometimes i'm just like it's it kind of awkward to ask for personal space i don't it, know for me it is it depends because like you have to wonder about you wonder about the other person how they'll take it yeah. Like some people overthink. Some people yeah. wonder, like, is it me? And other times it's like, no, it was just, I need that bubble, you know, that little space. Yeah. And it's like, sometimes, uh, yeah, I don't know how to approach it because it doesn't, it's not necessarily like serious. Sometimes you just want to like watch a show um, by yourself or watch like a YouTuber that you like. You just got to literally tell your partner, I need personal space, and tell them what it is you're doing. But that sounds so, even you saying that, it sounds so, like, serious. Like, what did I do? No. I feel like, I know it, it's not, but I feel like there's other ways to say it. You know what I mean? Well, you tell me. It's like, hey, I want to listen to music. Okay? Let's yeah. Let's music. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe saying it that way might help, but... It was like, when my PC's back up and running, it's going to be the same thing. Like, hey, I want to, like, focus on my game for, like, an hour. Mm-hmm. Not a big mm-hmm. deal. And it's, like, same thing with you when you're doing your studies. 
Like, hey, I need to, like, focus on my studies for a few hours. Mm-hmm. Cool. It also gives you space and time to hang out with, like, other people in your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's very important, and it's very important to be really communicative with your partner about it because most of the time like we understand well communication is key because yeah. like and i'm really bad at that if you go around doing things without telling your partner anything one it looks suspicious mm-hmm. two if they did it to you you wouldn't really be a big fan of it yeah. so it's like why would i give somebody so much emotional turmoil yeah when i know for myself i definitely wouldn't enjoy it yeah I mean, just so you know, cut to the chase. And, exactly. You know, just say it. It's like, you want to go out with your girls? Go out with your girls. You want to go out with your boys? Go out with your boys. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to communicate that. Mm-hmm. Where are you going? What are you doing? You don't have to tell them exactly everything down to the nitty gritty about, mm-hmm. like, well, who's going to be there? It's like, no, because people could flop. Yeah. End of the day, it's like, hey, this is planned. It's planned at this place with these people. Cool. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So simple. That's it. And don't just spring it up at last minute, too, either, because mm-hmm. it's like, if something happens at last minute, sure, I get that. Things happen last minute, but don't come out of the room taking, like, hey, going out to do this kind of stuff, and it's like, why? Like, where did this even, where yeah. did this spring up, you know? Also, I know that we do it for each other, but that's, that we do um, this thing for each other, but... Some people put a bad connotation to it, having, like, each other's location. Yeah, because they don't know how to be alone. So, yeah. So, I think that's a part of it. Like, do you think it's bad or good? I think it's good if you just don't take it as, like... To have each other's I locations? I need to know where you're at all the time. As long as you're not, like, pulling up on them in the middle of the night, knowing they're asleep, yeah. and you're like, what are you doing? Like, I'm sleeping. Yeah. Like, I've seen, I want to say I've seen people do it, but I've heard of cases like that. It's funny because I have your location, you have mine. I rarely check it. Only when I forget you're I even have the app. heading to my house. I honestly forget I even have the app. Even when you're coming to my place, I forget that I even have the app. Yeah, like, like, I don't even, that's the only time I probably check it is if you're on your way to my place or... Yeah, That's pretty, pretty much it. Yeah, because if I'm stuck in the middle of the road, I'm not moving. You're yeah, going to be like, um, what's like, going on really over there? <laughs> but at the same time, if I didn't have your location, I feel like it would feel weird. Why so? That sounds so, like, controlling. I don't know. I think, like... I don't know, because I think we have it because we have nothing to hide. Because now if we backtrack it, it'll be, like, weird. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it's weird, but it's like, you know, hey, you don't need to have it. Yeah. It's cool. I mean, it will still be fine if you didn't have my location and I didn't have yours, you know? Mm-hmm. But Not really it really anywhere. doesn't change anything. <laughs> huh? I don't go anywhere, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, some people, they put a bad connotation to it because... It's insecurities. It's, yeah, yeah, trust issues and everything. And, and I get that. Things like that happen in relationships, right? And, like, there's been horror stories about locations. Yeah, because you can hack somebody's device and stuff like that. But idealistically, it's like... Or just, like, catching your man cheating on you. That's another thing, too. Or women. <laughs> but, like, I think in perspective for real, it's more... Don't treat your current partner like your past partner. Yeah. Or if this is your first partner, don't run your relationship based on what everyone what else has done and or yeah. what you've heard. Because mm-hmm. social media can definitely ruin relationships. Just because you hear Absolutely. one person situation mm-hmm. doesn't mean that's your situation. And those of you that listen to your friends, male or female, ask that friend you're getting advice from, like, how long were they were they with that person? Mm-hmm. That's a very good question to ask because if they say less than six months, then who are you to give advice? Yeah. But if it's more than a year, then it's like, okay, I'll listen to what it is that you guys did, but I won't take it keenly to heart. Now someone's married for more yeah. than, say, like five years. Now that's someone who you should talk to mm-hmm. because they've been through it all. They've been through the dates. They've been through the the arguments, the fights, the near breakups, all that stuff, versus mm-hmm. someone who's, when we did it for six months, they can't commit. Then we did it because it was fun. Yeah. There you so, 
So, like, those kind of things where like, someone says, oh, you should never ask your partner for space. Like, you always want to be there. You never know what they could do behind your back. Well, yeah, because someone did it to you behind your back. Yeah. Like, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to do it to her behind her back. You just did that. The saying itself sounds so, like, why? You know, like, it sounds mm-hmm. so, what's the word? Mysterious? Mm-hmm. It sounds so, like, grim. But, really, it's essential to have personal space Oh, it's essential. Because before you drive, before you drive each other crazy. Yeah, that's why people invest in daycare because you, if your kids are around you all the time, like think of it like this: I have younger siblings, who would always tell me everything that they did. Like I did yeah. this, I did that. After the first two or three times they do that, it's cute. Then they come back like five minutes later, then another five minutes, and everything. It's like, yo, get out of my bubble! Yeah. Like, what are you doing? What do you want from me? I'm not your dad. I'm not your, I'm your brother. But it's the same thing with parents, too. Parents, they sign up for daycare because the kids, like, they're cute, but they can be annoying as hell sometimes. <laughs> like, do that with somebody else. Like, I understand you want to be show off and everything like that. You want to mm. be here for me. You want to, you know, show me every accomplishment you got. But sometimes, you ain't got to tell me everything. Mm. That's where I've learned to just keep my mouth closed sometimes and just not tell people anything that I'm doing. It's kind of smart. Some people take it as like, oh, you don't trust people with your information? I don't trust people with information. I don't trust people with the information I give. Because mm-hmm. I don't know what you're going to take that as. Yeah. There you go. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's pretty much the conclusion is to just... Accept personal space. Yeah. And be open and, you know, actually... What would be nice is if you offered to, right? right? Be like, hey, babe, do you need, like, some time to yourself? Uh, or I think you should um And I do offer that. Time. I've yeah, offered that do. for you. You've offered it for me. Uh-huh. So like, it's like, it's never a bad, we don't think of it as a bad thing. It's more, mm-hmm. you know, you have to read your partner. Yeah. You're not going to know what's in their head, but you have to read their body language. Yeah. Like, if she's stressed out, and I can tell when she's stressed, like, when she's, dealing with traffic or coming home from work and she really hasn't gotten anything done for herself throughout the week hey take that little two three hour nap you want to do you know yeah most of the time my personal space is just napping right (laughs) or watching desperate housewives yeah (laughs) um yeah so that's that's pretty good we're gonna move on to the special bonus episode Mm -hmm. um and we'll see you guys for the intro also, we got other vlog. We got another vlog to put up. Yes, like, if you guys watch this on our YouTube channel, we have vlogs coming out soon. We do whenever record. Whenever we find the time to um, well, there's edit ti- them. There's time to edit them. The problem is like when we get the time to edit them, other things come up, and we're just like, okay, editing or this important thing. So, but yeah, be on the watch out for those, and we'll see you guys for the outro. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. It somehow looks good in this camera. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You're just right. keep messing around. What? Don't handle the bromance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? That's incest. What's not, that's not incest. It's not incest. <laughs> Technically, well, it's your family member. Well, yeah, but we're not blood, so it's not incest. Oh, that's true. Ah, uh, yeah. There's a train behind us. Oh, is it? I, think I heard something. It's starting to get foggy. That is your truck. That is it. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Oh, so, what are we going to ask my cousin? Yeah, what, what do y'all got? First of all, tell them how we're related. <laughs> um, okay, so me and Ariel um, are cousins because my because. dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm not used to this. <laughs> um, my dad and her mom are siblings. So yes. that makes us first cousins. Mm. And I met Jordy through Ariel. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like the... I'm always the third wheel. No. Literally. <laughs> I'm, I'm always like the... I'm always the third wheel between you two. <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually the <laughs> true. Kind of true. But, but the thing is, I have third wheel for each and every single cousin that we have. And that's so true. So I have third wheel for you. And that's my fucking all proud of this. Other, all other, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm just there with the free food. <laughs> you know, for real, my my cousin gets all the free food when he goes on um, dates with us. Um, 
Malawa and our other cousins. Yeah. Malam bedek and chin. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> So most of our cousins are all yeah. booed up, so right. I don't know about you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's okay. It's um, okay. what should we ask my cousin? Yeah. I don't know. It's this is kind of on the spot. What got for me? Hmm. Hmm. Um. You go to the gym on the daily. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, what, tell us about yourself. What do you do? Where That's do you kind live? Of what I do. Uh, you know, I live in Vancouver. I get to see them, you know, every once in a while. They, it should be more often, but <laughs> it's rainy here. They they also just missed the rain yesterday. You mean the sun? I mean the sun. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I go to the gym every day. I work, too. I have a dog. Yeah. Oh, no. Kona. I'm single. <laughs> okay, let's ask you a very juicy question. What's All a good one? Right. Let's, let's You're one. always the one that comes up with <clears throat> good ones. Yeah, I'm gonna have time to think. It's okay. <laughs> On the hmm. spot, it's like just what, whatever you could think that you wanted to ask me. Yeah, What's the dating like, life? Like What's the dating here? life scene? Yeah, in Vancouver. There um, you go. That's a good one. Oh, that's a tough one because. Like, how do you meet people? It's, it's tough because in Vancouver, not everybody is as friendly as you think they are. I heard mm. people are very clicky. Like, yeah. people are, are like so, I don't know, they just keep to themselves most of the time. And, and people that have been single for a while that, you know, like you'd want to like hit up and you'd want to hit on when you see them anywhere or you talk to them on the, you know, on social media. It's, it's kind of the same thing because when you kind of get so deep into that like isolation where you, you know you just want to be like oh I want my own peace you know I for me like I go to the gym mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of just that's where my life kind of revolves at the moment mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's so hard to add another person in there when they're also doing the same thing because right. I'm kind of holding back that person also kind of holding back and that's kind of what I've noticed here in Vancouver mm -hmm. everybody's scared of commitment and yeah I don't know it's just hard to Is find it, someone someone maybe to, people think like it's such it's so like populated here right. maybe mm -hmm. people are like well what else is out there yeah right exactly. maybe that's what people especially when you're young you're like, well, no, I still, I'm still young. I want to explore, like, what else? Especially a city like Vancouver, yeah. where <clears throat> there's people are, in, you know, like more into looks here, like more it, hip, it, exactly. Well, think and of it like more like cooler or something. Well, think of it like Toronto and Vancouver are somewhat the same mm. because they're big metropolitan areas. There's a lot of people, a lot of young people, but then you also have the option to like go to cities like Seattle or LA or Toronto and go to New York. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you can do. Like you just leave and come back. You don't have to really commit to anything. Yeah. And there's like adventures on near corners, whereas like Edmonton, Calgary, Montreal, Ottawa, you're kind of in You a have to bubble. really like make it a mission to go out yeah. Yeah. outside of that. And, Here and it's in easier Vancouver, to do that. Like <clears throat> the, the dating apps, you can get you can get dates no problem. Oh yeah. But it's it's like you're the competing commitment. with every single man out there on the dating apps and out of the dating apps mm -hmm. yep. because like once you step foot downtown like it's a wild place. the women here probably you know? have like at least three or four guys on rotation oh yeah exactly at all times same with the gu gu uh, guys probably right oh, yeah they definitely and and well that that kind of place where you where you are though so like if if you know like you're making a lot of money if you're just like that like about that life of like partying and like being mm -hmm. in the clubs all the time then mm -hmm. you know you you'd attract girls mm -hmm. you know you'd attract you know most of the girls that would want to be you know in in that kind of scene because there's there's a whole lot of people um that you see in vancouver like young young kids that have just turned 19 and like the first thing in their mind is like oh i can't wait to go clubbing right you know mm -hmm. so it's <clears throat> i the, remember when i was that mm -hmm. age and so the clubbing the, cl the the clubbing scene in here actually plays a, a pretty big role with like um meeting people yeah like socializing because people are like i'm just gonna go to a club to go meet a girl you know right. there's no yeah. commitment like oh i want to go date someone and actually put in the effort to take her out mm -hmm. you know communicate with her text her you know you know, 
do the all the stuff that requires to to have a relationship yeah so i don't know people are like taking the pursuing the, part yeah <clears throat> and so people easy. don't want to do that mm -hmm. well most of that pursuit gets done on social media nowadays because that's true when you really think about it like you said you go into a club to meet a girl you're not committed to the girl mm -hmm. you go in there to probably get one off and that's mm -hmm. it also yeah. <laughs> i noticed that most men just do it especially if they're younger mm -hmm. just to like show off right yeah having a woman is kind of like a status oh yeah yeah what most guys would normally think of is like look at my instagram follow list and then if you see nothing but women on there it's like a status for them they're like oh i'm a castle oh guy. i know this person i know right. this. yeah i have a lot of connections where it's like you probably follow them but you don't talk to them you don't even know them oh, yeah. yeah so it's there's like, so many people i follow i've never spoken to right so end of the day when he wants to come, come in to make a connection, like a long-term building kind of connection. Yeah, it's tough. It's rough. It's really hard. Like you, yeah. Both sides have to be down to do that because it takes work of two. Yeah, and which one. which is why I deleted my dating apps because mm -hmm. it's it, the, the competition <clears throat> that you think you have out there versus the, like especially for dating apps, it's mostly the guys that would do like 80% of the work. Mm -hmm. Right. Because... You know, you'd get like five swipes for a week and you're like, oh, damn, five people like me, you know? And as well as if a girl downloaded a dating app, it's an like ego 20, thing. 20 mm -hmm. minutes later, you have like 50 likes, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's insane. Like, so the, having that also just kind of fucks with you with like your mental peace. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, man, like, did she respond? Right. Oh, did I get another mm -hmm. like? So like I was in that kind of state for a little bit like and i'm cycle. like and yeah you're constantly on your phone that's like the ego thing the yeah around you or your like ego that. is fed and then it gets taken so like away. you're looking for validation out there yeah. that you're like oh you're something because mm -hmm. people notice you but then you know at the end of the day like i just want somebody if i would have to meet someone i just want them to see me for me because i don't know right. it's it's so much fakeness nowadays and it's just it's kind of messed up hey like yeah because it's sort of like some people treat it like a game, mm -hmm. dating apps, and then some yeah. people treat it like it's serious. Like, like I want to actually. It's a mission. Yeah. Yeah. So like, there's always you. You never know who you're gonna come across with, like <clears throat> in and, dating apps. And also, like I noticed with like my generation now, I'm like you know, like 21, 22. When you like start liking a girl, you can't <laughs> like you can't pursue like more mm -hmm. you know you know what i'm talking about like you, like your effort should just be enough you have to like play, play exactly it, like, like lay it low for a bit exactly but then like why though you know what i mean yeah like if you like the person and that person likes you back like that should be it it's a go, well, go, go. the problem with society with that it's built in the minds and it's not it's not really anyone's fault it's more just a collective yeah a collective union of issues yeah where people want to be like pursued but then it'll all be smothered they don't want to think that like they're easy they don't want to reciprocate that type mm -hmm. of thing just in case like i think people are just scared of like that's trust issues for sure yeah it's and just it's, trust it's, issues but also some i know honestly some women just like it just gets their big like head big oh yeah, yeah. and, and, and I mean, some women are like yeah i can commit with you but like there, there's also other people out there you yeah. know so that also plays a part with like i have three other guys that i'm talking to on this dating app yeah um, and you know if if i like go with you and and go 100 percent then I'd have to drop these three yeah. guys which have potential because I like them too. So you know like, what the thing about it is? If you have too many options, you'll end up with none. Yeah. Exactly. So, oh, yeah. like, if you play too many guys all at once, you'll get confused and then you'll end up with, like, not mm -hmm. committing to any of them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so. oh, yeah. I can tell a brief story about that. Boy, they have what? just grilled chicken breasts. <laughs> <laughs> you can just order that. <laughs> It's okay, the teriyaki one sounds good. Right. You're like, oh, I have, a little bit of, have a little bit of a flavor to it. Yeah. Right. I can tell a brief story about like what she just said and all that. Because it kind of happened to me. But in a way, it's kind of it's kind of funny when you think about it. Because like, there was a girl that did like me. But then she liked a bunch of other dudes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I ain't going to fight. Cause I don't fight against other men for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. 
So when I met Ariel, she hits me up talking about, so what you saying? Like, I'm in a relationship. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? She's like, oh, 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 that. So the girl you've been posting is actually, yeah. Like, it's not just me. <laughs> oh, that girl did? Yeah, it's not sure? just it's not just me adoring her. It's like me, I'm actually like with this girl. <laughs> that's my girl. You're not just a fan? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, what do you see? This is just like, a fan page, actually. I, 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 thought, I thought you'd just been crushing on this girl. You've been putting her on your right. story. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm crushing on a girl I took to California. And then all of a sudden, yeah. it's like she's all over the place. Like, no, like, I'm actually like with this woman. So she was oh, like. Oh, you didn't tell me that? I didn't think it was relevant because it's like nothing really came of it. And I told her, like, yeah, like, you know, you said it was me and like four other people. So where are those other guys? Oh, they're in relationships too. So you're left with nothing. Yeah. And she's like, I'll just keep trying to do what I can. Yep. And in the meantime, Godspeed and have a good life. <laughs> I couldn't say yeah, any more. I mean, I, I, have a, I have a similar one too. <laughs> You know, right? Like, like oh yeah, hit, hit, you know, you have a you guys, similar you, one. You guys have a. You have a similar <laughs> one. <laughs> really, a similar story. <laughs> really had to throw shade. <laughs> I'm all for it, but damn. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. That's a good one. I respect you. I am all for it. it. <laughs> That's wild. Oh my um, god. No, but yeah, like you know, like shows you it, like shows you interests. Like oh yeah, like I'll talk to you for like this amount of time. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You know, and consistently too. You know, like and to think, you know, we went to the Philippines and I was like talking to her. Crazy man. Right. And I came back and like the energy was just like. It kind of went back to, I don't know. It felt like her energy was she was more engaged when I was back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, he's probably doing more. When you weren't around. available, yeah, she liked you more. But when you were exactly well, I, when then when I was here, and and then he was like, she canceled on me like a couple times. So then that I took the hint. I'm like, damn. Right. And I was with you guys when you know I talked to her last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that we were talking about that like on, our, on the camping trip, like yeah. late night talks. And all it's like, end of the day, people always wonder, like, why do you post your girlfriend so much? Why shouldn't you? Yeah. Like, it's, like, that a, it's that an issue. Ship nation. Like if, if I had a girlfriend. You gotta show your, <laughs> you're showing your appreciation. I'd be, yeah, I'd be posting too. Right. Like, and it's not like I'm posting like every single day. I'm posting the moments we have together. Yeah. That's an adoration. And exactly. a lot of, and that's what some people run away from. They're like, mm. I don't want to have all that yeah, attention. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. let people know that I love my partner yeah, exactly right. i don't know it, why it's why? like that because it comes off as, it makes people come off like there's a thing of weakness apparently like oh it's all you're all about them you have no identity I and that's the problem with it because love is blind really made that worse because i don't know if y'all know brennan and alexa brennan has no fucking identity whatsoever oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but brennan i'm an avid fan too the, the difference between <laughs> me and brennan <laughs> i can, go on that show for <laughs> Can we sign on. him up? We what could you actually. <laughs> you got to audition. That's it. I go to the gym. Like, hey, yo. <laughs> That's it. Hey, yo. But it's like, Brendan has no identity. Like, he has no say in anything. He's in everybody's business about their relationships. Like, he told yeah. Matt and Colleen, oh, if you're not living together, you don't love each other. Who says that to somebody? Yeah. Oh, they're ready for us. Oh, sweet. Period. So, right. I wasn't even 45 minutes. I was like 20. Right. Good. Anyway, we'll so, continue this. We'll continue this. On the drive. Sorry to cut to you off, States. love. I'm so hungry. I am very hungry, too. So we'll show you inside the restaurant. Food will be fine. Yes. Later. Bye. Right, bye. Okay. So, we hope you guys enjoyed that little segment. Um, having a special guest is our first time having a special guest. But it's good to have guests, though. Yeah, so let us know how that goes, how you like it, if you would like more. Can we have a lot of guests, people who we can who talk to? Who would you like to see? Um, yeah, feel free to message us with anything, really. We are open to anything, right? as always. Um, we'll do our best to be consistent with uploading and mm -hmm. everything. Um, and we'll see you guys next week yeah. for another episode. Thank you again for listening for Date Night in Podcast. And thank you for showing love all the time. Oh, yeah. 
our few listeners out there. <laughs> nah. The few that you have, it's always good. Small communities are always the best. Because yeah. they grow bigger and bigger. But you know who your core people yeah. are. Let us know what else you guys would like to see from us. Obviously, we're always open to anything. And, yeah. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye. See you next week.